how do we measure um, endpoints, especially for new therapies and our existing therapies, to decide uh, if something is really beneficial to patients? Well, in advanced prostate cancer, we've historically looked at survival benefit. And uh, with the exception of the anti-resorptive agents, denosumab and zoledronic acid, all of the other agents since 2004 to now have all been approved based upon an overall survival improvement. And many have been uh, also evaluated for their prevention of radiographic progression-free survival. Or what more simply stated is the, the onset of the, and the detection of new lesions radiographically. Um, the, organ, the, the group of folks of uh, worldwide experts in the field, urologists, medical oncologists, radiation oncologists, uh, led by uh, my good friend Howard Shear at Sloan Kettering, the Prostate Cancer Working Group, have done a tremendous job of trying to better assess what are the correct parameters that we should be uh, looking at as trialists uh, to evaluate progression. And they've met you know, a, 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 for a, a great amount of time to keep trying to upgrade and improve the criteria. Now one of the things that's really important what the PCWG2 said from a trial standpoint is when we're evaluating patients and making a decision to move them to another antineoplastic therapy is really sort of th a, a, a triumvirate or three things. And that is not to change therapy based upon a rising PSA, if that's the only criteria, but to consider change of therapy if a patient develops clearly new symptomatology related to uh, his malignancy. Invariably, it's pain. Perhaps it could also be inanition and cachexia, but invariably, it's a, it's a pain phenomenon. And, and then radiographic progression. So one of the things we've come to understand is that when we're assessing for new lesions radiographically, historically and even really contemporaneously now, the most common forms of radiographic assessment are still CT scan and technetium bone scan. More and more we're looking at newer technologies with different uh, tracers for PET scan technology. Depending upon where you are in the world, you might have access to different uh, formulations that some are better identifying new bone lesions, some soft tissue. But that said, the really interesting thing about uh, the prostate cancer working group in using the RESIST criteria, which has to do with a, a more formalized way of measuring the actual size and sum, um, the bi-dimensional sum of the size of the actual lesions is to make sure that we don't um, change our decision making if we get a scan too early on after a new therapy is given and we see expansion of a lesion. Now expansion of a lesion, we, we, another way of phrasing it is we call this a flare. And oftentimes you can give a therapeutic agent that's working and if you get uh, your radiographic assessment within a three month period, you might actually see that the lesions appear bigger. And this is felt to be, in many cases, what's known as a flare phenomenon. And it, the drug is actually working and there's almost invariably an immune and or inflammatory response that's occurring. So when our radiology colleagues look at it and they're not uh, cognizant of the therapeutic basis of what's occurring in terms of strategies of medication, they may say, okay, I, I saw the scan three months ago, now I'm looking at it again three, three months later. Lesions are bigger, it's progression of disease. So in the two plus two aspect of the resist criteria, it's to at least identify uh, after a 12 week period that indeed if you see new lesions, not only are there at least two new lesions, but you've also confirmed it with a second radiographic test. That's so two new lesions, second radiographic test, two plus two. And I think this is a very good way in our trials, and it's, it's probably a very good way clinically to avoid premature interruption or cessation of a therapeutic 
um, before it's given enough time to have a beneficial effect. So uh, recently in this month in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, uh, there have been two um, you know, wonderful articles, uh, a first one by um, uh, Mike Morris uh, and his colleagues and with a very nice editorial review by Andy Armstrong and Susan Hallaby. Uh, I would encourage everyone to read this. They're looking at a very a, a detailed assessment of radiographic progression-free survival and its future impact and how we really understand it in not only our trials, been in our clinical assessment for patients. There's also a second article in there by Howard Shear and his colleagues looking at circulating tumor cells in combination with LDH and another way of looking at that as predictive of therapeutic benefit. So we're always trying to come up with some additional markers to help us be more informed about decisions that we could make uh, regarding patient care.